Welcome to ETFinalScore.com, your source for all the highlight stats and stories and scores from around East Texas high school football with your host, Eric Sullivan. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the ETFinalScore.com football show. Second week of the season. Eric Sullivan here. Nick Zielinski will be joining us from the Lindell Carthage game in just a few minutes, along with all of our Tyler Paper correspondents from all over East Texas. We, of course, want you to be a part of the show. Go to our website, ETFinalScore.com. The Twitter feed has been blowing up tonight. ETFinalScore.com is our Twitter page, Facebook as well. Or shoot me a text right now. Shoot me a text at 903-216-7290. We start with our showcase game of the night, Lindell versus the three-time defending state champion Carthage Bulldogs. Big chance for the Eagles to show they are the real deal in Class 3A2. Eagles Stadium, we go for the highlights. No love lost between these two. Carthage beat them on a Hail Mary in the playoffs last year. Blake Bogan shoots looking good early, finds Ed Pope and the Bulldogs. Have the early lead in this one. And how about Clay Price? This young man, what a difference a summer makes. He's got in the gym, he's got in the weight room, and just running hard right here, spinning, finds his way into the end zone. Actually, that was a little reverse to Josiah Johnson, so good teamwork there. We are tied up. Carthage Bogan shoots, comes right back to Tevin Pipkin. Tevin, look at this guy go up the sidelines. Carthage known for their outstanding speed. They retake the lead, but... Here comes that Mike Metter methodical offense. Look at the running by Mr. Trey Acey. Then Clay Price on the keeper. Fools everybody on that option right there. Get to the pylon, young man. Touchdown. Lindell taking control of the game. They're not done yet. Price now showing off the other weapons he has there in the big blue. Josiah Johnson. Everybody wants a player like him. Gets it inside the two-yard line. Then Demarcus Lynch says, Give the call to me. I want to go in the end zone. Eagle fans loving every minute of it. And there is DeMarcus. Look at him saying, get out of my way, Carthage. Final score, Eagles. Big showdown. They get it done. They'll be in the top 10 next week in Class 3, 33-21. to 21. With more on this game, let's go back to Eagle Stadium. That's where our Nick Zielinski joins us. And what a win right there for the Eagles. Nick, give us yeah, the reaction. Richard, as you mentioned, Lindell wins. They defeat Carthage 33-21. to 21. A big game for those Eagles. They get redemption from last year's loss after that 47-42 heartbreaker. They get it back this year, a 33-21 victory. And I'm joined now by Lindell senior quarterback Clay Price. And Clay, a big, big win for you guys tonight. How big is this for y'all after last year and then just going forward this year? It's huge because they've been the three-time defending state champs going and gives us a lot of momentum going into next week and next week, setting up the whole year for us. How big for, for you guys? What did this tell you about your team? These guys, you guys got down early, but you came back every time. Then you just blew them away the second half. What did you learn about your team tonight? We learned that we can fight the whole game. It was tough, and we ended up having to pound the ball at the end, but we just kept going and shoved it down. Coming out in the second half, it's a 19 to 14 ball game. You guys come out, you go six minutes on the clock, you run them down, you run almost every play, run it right down their throat, get a 26 to 14 lead after that. How big was that drive for you guys going for the second half? That was huge because we knew by then we could just keep running the ball. We were running it down, taking up the clock, and it worked out well for us, kept it going. When I talked to you guys about a month ago, the, one, the two words that y'all kept telling me were state championship, sure. state championship. That's been on your mind the entire time. Knowing you've now beaten the three-time defending state champ, how much confidence do you have going forward? Well, that gives us a lot. We know we got a lot of tough teams coming up, like Hallsville and Chapel Hill, but this is a good game to show us where we're at. You had a 81-yard uh, touchdown run there in the fourth quarter to kind of seal things. You ran away from the defenders. You showed some wheels. I mean, did you know you had that in you? Uh, not really. Um, they, got, they got a lot of fast guys back there, and it just kind of got away, opened up, and saw the end zone. If you guys now win in this game, you're probably going to jump into the top ten. Any, any pride from that? Uh, yes, sir. We know now that we're going to have a target on our backs, so we got to be ready for each week. Everyone's coming to play us hard. All right, Clay. Well, man, congratulations. Great win for you guys. Clay and the Lindell Eagles take on Hallsville next week. They want to get redemption for that one as well, Eric. So we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll be out there again. We'll see. But as for now, that's it out here at Eagle Stadium. I'm Nick Zielinski. Eric, back to you in the studio. Outstanding job there, Nick, and congratulations to the Eagles. All right, over at Rose Stadium tonight, Robert E. Lee taking on their longtime rival from East Texas, the Lufkin Panthers. Lufkin beat JT last week. They were wanting to get the Tyler sweep tonight. Let's now go to our man Desmond Nugent from CBS 19. He joins us from Rose Stadium with more. Des, take it away. 
Right. That's right, Eric. These two teams are longtime rivals, having played 50 games dating all the way back to 1960. Now, right now, the Robert E. Lee Red Raiders are on one, and they're looking to even their record with a possible win over the Lufkin Panthers. But they can win games when they give up runs just like this one. Second play of the game, Jamarcus Walker goes all of 70-plus yards for the touchdown. Look at him go. Coach Huff can't be happy with that play. Panthers on the punt return, Jabrice Taylor showing he got some moves as well. Four three yards. He didn't make the touchdown, but that would set up Lufkin for a field goal. 17 nothing Lufkin. Seconds before the first quarter would end, Robert E. Lee's Joseph Sieber with head fake right there. Touchdown pass to Drake Scott. 17 7 Lufkin. But the Panthers would give it into the hands of their star running back once again, Jamarcus Walker. That's his third touchdown, 24 to 7 Lufkin. But it wouldn't be all about football tonight. During that halftime show, Ryan Nash proposes to his girlfriend, Sarah Orsby, young love at its finest. We're going to turn it back to Eric for the final update. Eric. Esmond, get that scoreboard up for us, Scotty. That ring looks pretty good there, too. Way to go, Ryan, and way to go, Sarah, for saying yes. <laughs> Lufkin, five times in a row. They beat Lee there, 38-20. to 20. All right, we got to bring in Chris Perry now from the Tyler Paper. He's the beat writer for the Red Raiders. Uh, uh, Chris, you've uh, watched this team now two weeks in a row. Uh, you've seen some good in Robert E. Lee, but I, I think we need to get props to Johnny Outlaw and Lufkin. They're a very good football team. Yeah, they're very, I mean, they really are. Uh, Jamarcus Walker is the real deal. Uh, one cut, he was gone on that run. Lee did a better job of, uh, of kind of stymieing him after that. But when you go 65 yards on the first play, he still finished with 128 and four touchdowns. It just seemed that uh, every time Lee had a chance to get into it, Lufkin always had, always, always had an answer. And, of course, uh, right there in the first half, it's uh, 17 to 7. Lee has stopped Lufkin. Lufkin's punting the ball, and the ball goes all the way down and hits a Lee kid right in the back at the five yard line, and Lufkin recovers. And those are the kinds of things that just keep happening to the Red Raiders. I mean, three of Lufkin's touchdown drives in the first half were from the Lee uh, 15 and in. Uh, on, you know, one and a fumble, one and two good kick returns, and then, of course, Jamarcus Walker's long run. The good news is, really, is they got their offense going really well in the second half. They they used a four-prong rushing attack with Aeneas Sutton, uh, Marcus White, Laquinas Wallace, and Galavian Baker, and finished with almost 200 yards rushing. That's two games in a row they've been able to run the football. They just can't keep spotting these teams, these big leads. All right, Chris, of course, it doesn't get any easier. Uh, Battle of the Rose City with John Tyler next Friday. They, of course, are in separate districts now. Um, what is Coach Huff telling his guys right now? Because you know beating JT next Friday would kind of forget about these first two weeks. Yeah, they're definitely going to be pumped up, but it's always a big game between both teams, and it's really one of those games, it's cliche that you throw the records out the window, but uh, Lee just can't keep getting behind by these big margins. That's that's kind, of what's, that's kind of what's hurting them right now. I think if they can keep the game close, then you never know, because they, they showed tonight that they can run the football. Yeah, uh, Chris, thank you for the analysis. Of course, you'll be back next Friday as we get ready for the Battle of the Rose City. And don't forget John Tower Longview tomorrow night, Rose Stadium, 730. Going to be a classic, I imagine. Let's check in on those defending state champions, the Henderson Lions now on the road last Friday. Home opener tonight against Pine Tree, flashing those big, shiny state championship rings and flashing some great running. Can anybody take down LaMarcus Brown? Love this guy. Good job by our cameraman Mike to stay all the way right there. Now Dell Barnes, boy, he's a guy. He's a leader. He's a winner. He knows how to find the right guys. Beautiful pass down the pipe. Touchdown to LaMarcus Brown. 14 to nothing. Now Pine Tree, of course, always trying to rebuild every year with new coaches, but maybe they get something going here against Henderson. Matt Cox gets the punt, our kickoff return, and he's got a lane, ladies and gentlemen, up the left side. Keep up on going, Mr. Matt Cox, but... Quarterback Jake Odin is going to try to get something going here for the Pine Tree Pirates. He on uh, a keeper here. Nice little run, but loses a shoulder pad a la Earl Campbell there. Doesn't get into the end zone, so no score for the Pirates. And then we got Dell Barnes. Uh, the guy's just relentless. He's going to hand off to Jeff Holt. Fake, uh, fake it and then find Jeff Holt, his big tight end, 21-7. to seven. And then Dell Barnes, uh, you give this guy an inch, he takes you a mile faking out everybody on the reverse. And then look at my man, LaMarcus Brown. He's got one shoulder pad, too. He don't need him. Great job of running. And we've got the Lions winning 58-27. to 27. Man, they're good. Real quick, let's rewind to last night. What a game. 
We had top-ranked Chapel Hill taking on White House over at Rose Stadium. Unbelievable crowd and an unbelievable game. Over 1,000 yards. Hunter Taylor threw for 500 yards. And then Zendarian Haskins gave Ch White House the lead early with this incredible 48-yard touchdown round. But Avery signs 315 yards passing. 275 rushing for Chapel Hill. That's Nelson on Muzu, and what a win for Chapel Hill. 59 to 49. That was last night. Chapel Hill taking on Carthage here soon. All right, we got to hit a break, but before we do, we got to check out the always classic Tatum versus Gilmer matchup. This time in Eagle Stadium down in Tatum Eagle Country we go. Jeff Trailer, one of the best coaches around. Lots of state championships. Andy Reid, a couple of state championships. Lots of football genius in this one. And Jalen Overstreet hitting L.J. Johnson. He's going to score, right? No. Justice Cheatham, you get hustle point, hustle play of the night. Great job there. Fourth and three. Tatum going for it, but blocked up by Mr. Traylon Webb right there. Great defensive stand by the Buckeyes. And then Luke Turner, great game in week one. Week zero, a little rusty here. Gets mixed up with his running back and no uh, score on that drive. And then meanwhile, look at this play here. Massive hit coming from Branson Parker, putting Jalen Overstreet to the turf right there. Luke Turner had his coffee in the huddle, and he gets it going here. Nobody better than him on the run, over the middle. Great ball to Jaden Parrish. He gets the first down. And then Turner, of course, we call him the Tim Tebow of high school football here in East Texas. Keeps it himself. Easy win for the Buckeyes. You don't see them, anybody, blank Tatum very often, but Gilmer does it 34 to nothing. All right, first break of the night is right now. Up next, we've got Kilgore checking on Jacksonville. All kinds of scores, plus Chase Colson will join us live. Don't go anywhere. 